Would you like to earn yourself some extra money this Christmas? Maybe you want to buy a gift for your friend, for your family. Maybe you want to donate some money to charity. Well, why don't you check out Profit Accumulator? So to find out more and to sign up, check the link in the description and get involved right now with Profit Accumulator. Hi, welcome to AFTV. You've tuned into the preview of tomorrow's game here at the Emirates against Southampton with myself, Cecil G, and my guy, James B. And I mean, it's a lovely day today, to be, to be fair, but I'm still feeling heavily down from the defeat against Burnley, James. I don't know how you feel. I've been getting things sent to me by friend groups absolutely annihilating me and our team at the moment. I don't know how it's been for you. Like all hope is lost. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm exaggerating. I mean, um, Burnley was bad. With every other defeat, you, you've been able to point to something, you've been able to hang your hat on something yeah. to just give you hope. And before Burnley, it was as bad as things were. It was a tricky run, tricky opposition. We got in a rut, we couldn't get out of it. Mm. And Burnley at home was the perfect opportunity to get out of that. And we haven't, which has opened my eyes to really how deep these problems are, even to the point where I'm questioning the manager. Mm. And before, I had been quite stubborn in saying, whether it's a problem or not, there's other things to look at. Now I'm, I'm edging much towards those other problems that exist. I've not forgotten about yeah, those. The yeah. players, they don't get away with it. The Cronkies, no one. But I can't let Arteta get away with certain Subs selection decisions, yeah. certain yeah. substitutions and things like that. So yeah, feeling very down. And I'll be honest, I'm not confident ahead of tomorrow. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm also not very confident ahead of tomorrow. However, we did break down the stats today. This morning I was looking through them. And again, this is why I always say stats don't always paint the full picture because you look at these stats and think, well, these are great. Easy, easy three points, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we, uh, <laughs> yeah. If stats told the story, we'd be in the title race right yep. now. Do you know what I mean? That's, yep. that's the mad thing about it. So we're breaking all sorts of records and not for the right reasons. But um, exactly 1959, that. I wonder how long it's been since five home defeats in a oh, row. Yeah, I didn't wow, actually have yeah. that stat. I'd like to have known that. Maybe it's never happened. It's probably never happened. Maybe, that's probably maybe we're going to set a brand new, new record. record at all time. I yeah. shouldn't be smiling at that, but yeah, that yeah, that would be. You've got to laugh because it's uh, so it's bad that right now. Yeah, it's you, that know. you cry. It, it, really it, is. It, it is bad. Should we get into them? Yes, let's look at the stats. Let's, um, let's let them know what we've got. There's a couple of things I want to talk about today. We'll go through sort of some of the headline stats, but then I want to put this topic in your head now and for the viewers, efficiency. Mm. I think that's a big problem we have right now, and I kind of mm. want to gauge for you. I don't know. But I'll ask you a few questions yeah, after, but on that, I mean, efficiency for me is, is is it comes with the term urgency for me. Remember, I've been talking okay. about the team's urgency and how they this transitional is it transitional mm. football is how urgent they move the ball and get it forward. I think we're really lacking that, but I'm sure you've got. Stuff yeah, let's to, get into it. So Arsenal down. are unbeaten in their last 25 home league games against Southampton. They've won 18, drawn seven. The last time they lost was in November 1987. Wow, we lost one 0 I wasn't born again. That's going to change tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. No, positive. Yes, positive. We're, we're going to win. We're going to turn around the season Yay. tomorrow. Um, let's get to the next one. Southampton drew this exact fixture with Arsenal 2-2 last season, mm -hmm. conceding a 90th minute equaliser courtesy, courtesy of Alexander Lacazette. Oh, yeah. They've not avoided defeat in a consecutive... Sorry, they've not avoided defeat in consecutive away league games against Arsenal since September 1988. So, you know, again, history is saying that they're going to come lose tomorrow. But... Last, last season's fixture was very it was a curious one because people had started to turn on Emery, the tide yeah. was turning, yep. and we went into that game and we were bad. And, and mm. actually, I remember us equalising, like, it, they say 90th minute, I think it was like 96th. Yeah, it was, like, it was last, um, last minute, I remember it. We equalised, and, and the reaction was like, oh, that's a shame. <laughs> yeah, you know, because yeah. that's probably just brought yeah. Emery another, yeah. you know, a week or two it. in the job. I know it sounds mad, and you always want Arsenal to win, and I'm not for one second condoning not celebrating a last minute mm. equaliser. But I guess what I'm saying is the mood was so flat that we were like, draw might have been better long term. Uh, sorry, yeah. defeat might have been better in yeah. the long term. And it's nuts that we got to that point. Um, Do you think we're getting close to that point? I will never be like that as an Arsenal fan. I'll always want Arsenal to win. Okay. Always. There's no, there is no situation where a draw or a defeat is better. But do you think, it's a hard question to ask, but do you think there are fans that are starting to go, well, actually, the more we lose, the quicker the manager gets out. I, I know it's a horrible thing it's to say. It's a terrible thing. I would thing. never want that and any yeah, fan who no, thinks that, that shame on them. Yeah. But do you think people are starting to get to where we were with Southampton last year? That's why I bring it up because it was the same fixture. Yeah, I mean... I'll put that to you. I, again, I'm with you. I would. I don't think any fans should think like that. However, I, I actually know fans that are quick 
quick to be like that. They, they, they even say an Arteta has not been the man for the job from the beginning. Yeah. And they, they probably do want to see potentially a defeat just so it speeds up his exit. But for me, no way. No way. I'm still not Arteta me. in. I mean, people mm. may call me deluded. People may think I'm being silly and um, it's, it's outrageous me still thinking that. But I still want him to have his window and really assess him from there. But yeah, no, I, I'm, I, I want to see us change it around and I, oh, we have to, we have to in this month here, we have to in these run of games, otherwise we could be, we're going to be really are going to be in the relegation battle, which, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, I internally set, like for me, I set Arteta a points tally of 20 out of 30 by the end of January. Yes. Um, and the reason I did that was I felt it gave him enough leeway to, you know, the form we're in, we're not going to win every game. I yeah. completely accept that. There's going to be a few defeats in there, but Ultimately, I've got to see him steadying the ship, and if he's not doing that, I start to really worry. Burnley was a horrendous start <laughs> to that run, um, but at some point, you feel it's got to turn around. If not, the manager is probably going to go, and that's yeah. really awful to say. But I'm kind of with you in that. While I've turned and I've got more doubts about Arteta than I ever have, where I am a little more patient over a few nights' sleep and actually think about it is, I do not, and I can say, I've said this time and time again, I do not want the players to keep getting away with it. Yeah, that's simple no, as that. I, I agree. So I agree. You know, I, I think. I'd rather and see that all them go before the manager. Yeah, and just on, just quickly before we move on. Also, mm. uh, with the manager again, it's all well and good saying the fans, the fans that want Arteta out now. It's all well and good saying it, but that happens. We get interim manager, say probably Mertesacker, and then we're, nothing's going to really change. He still has the same batch of players. It, it'll probably dip even worse. I just say let's just get through this period with the manager and see what happens, and then. Like you said, if, if nothing changes after At the least window. back him in January, see yeah, what he can do. And, and yeah. the, board, the board have said, they've said that they're backing him. So that was actually last week they've said yeah. that. So I think even they do last night, so yeah. Well, there you go. They're not, they haven't, they probably haven't even thought of bringing in a new manager just yet. They yeah. might be thinking it now, but that's still a process. So yeah, that's very true. Thing. Let's get to the next one. Arsenal have received six Premier League red cards. It's Mikel Arteta's first game in charge 12 months ago. Th this one shocked me. Mm. And do you know what? I, I've, I'm sure I heard it before obviously um, looking at it today, but this one shot me because I didn't realise it was in a just, it's only been 12 months. I know. That, six There's red discipline problems, man. There's discipline. Oh. And, and some of it is on the manager, but he's not the one getting himself sent off on the pitch. Those mm. six red cards are down to those players. Um, what's going on with discipline issues, you know, away from the field. Do you not know, right? we, we questioned this. Do you remember a few weeks ago, we said, are there, are there discipline, discipline problems at the club? I think it was on one of our news shows. Yeah. And I didn't really feel comfortable asking that because I felt, I don't think we've got that much evidence of it. Now I'm like, no, yeah, there's, there's 100% yeah, there's, a discipline problem at the club. There's loads of problems it. within 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 house that we're finding out. And mm. I think that does lead onto the pitch. I, I was going to ask you, do you think it's because the game has got more strict with VAR and how, nah, how, how soft stupid. the games become is why we've got so many red cards, but then that can be counted with, we're probably the, we are the highest team yeah. by a long shot with the most red cards in 12 months mm. from, from a manager because I think the next one's like three so it's yeah. half, half of six so yeah I agree um, I want to go into a bit of a topic of conversation here I mentioned efficiency at the beginning of the show yep. um, let me just read you something out I know we're not playing Leicester but I want to use Leicester as an example so okay. this season Leicester have had sorry I'll start with Arsenal Arsenal have had 94 shots in 12 games. Yep. 12? Tw uh, so so yeah, we're 12. averaging yeah. obviously less than 10 a match, which is nuts. Leicester have had 92. They're two less than us. And they're, they're, they're very much higher, higher than us right well, now. Well, listen to this. We scored 10 goals, they scored 24. Okay, so yeah, their conversion rate's a joke. Uh, their conversion rate is 26% to our just shy, just under 11%. Yep. Of our 94 shots, 40 of them were on target, whereas 55 of them were on target. So that's 60% of their shots are on target. target so hold that thought. Yep. Keep, okay. keep that in your head. Yeah. Obviously, that Leicester and less shots scoring way more goals and being much more efficient. Yep. Listen to this, though. In terms of passing, this doesn't include crosses. Mm -hmm. Arsenal ranked fourth in the table behind City, Chelsea and Liverpool. OK, that's not too surprising. With a very high accuracy of about 85%. OK. Southampton are as low as 13th with 80% pass accuracy, roughly, about 6,000 passes. It's a little bit irrelevant, but they're down in 13th. But if you yeah. look at this, passing, the top 20 players in terms of passing the opposition half, we don't have a single player in the top 20. <laughs> that, that, that actually doesn't surprise me. That really does not surprise me. You say that, and it doesn't because the, from, the eye from test, I, from the I, eye yeah, test tells you. Completely from well, I. I'm, I'm not surprised because yeah. the way we play. But the other stats have surprised me. How can we be 
fourth for passing and high for pass accuracy. Well, maybe that's why our passing is so accurate because we've just got in a dangerous area. Got sideways and back. But, but I think I thought that was incredible. And I go back to this word again. I mentioned at the beginning, the beginning of the show: efficiency. Yeah. What we're doing with the ball, mm. what we're doing with our shots, mm. we're not hitting the target, we're not being clinical, we're not, when we've got the ball, we're not keeping it in dangerous areas. Yeah. Is there an argument for the football actually not being as bad as we think, only the players aren't doing their jobs, no. if you know what I mean? No. Um, you don't? You don't, you no, don't think? No, because, I mean, I'm doing it from, from If I, Lacazette takes his chance, if Saka takes his chance. Nah. It's not. It's still not enough chances created. No, I, am I being harsh? I don't know. I, I, I don't. But think does so. chances co- created come out also from being efficient with the ball? Yes, but and with, but with the passes aren't they aren't. Um yeah, they're not. They're not penetrating the defenses enough. It's not exci- from watching. I'm bored of I'm bored of watching mm. Arsenal. I'm bored of how we play. It doesn't matter how many passes we're keeping and, and completing, and we're up the he- we're up in the the top four. I. I I don't think it matters. Even if they, we take our chances, we're not creating enough. It's not like, oh, exciting football. Oh, there's another chance. There's another chance, and it's just all in our half, James. Mm. I know. I know from many games. I looked at the stats. Our keepers had the highest um, pass, highest amount of passes, and success success rate has come from Leno at times. Into the final third. Exactly, yeah, yeah, and and then or, half, exactly yeah. or or Gabriel. Mm. It's it's not, it's not exciting. I mean. No, yeah, that's that's my. I, I my asked point the on question, that. and I know I'm being very, I'm uh, pushing you on it because I, I do wonder whether there's something there. But then I stop and I think, well, he's the one who keeps shoving Willian onto the right where he looks a bit uncomfortable. Mm. He's the one who's playing uh, Jacker in this kind of left centre back role at times. Like that is coaching. Yeah. So actually, he's the one not playing Smith Rowe. So actually, I stop and I think, well, that's you know what, maybe that's when it falls back on on the manager. If you want to put cross into the box, play Cedric, who's better at crossing than Bellerin. Yeah. So I do get what you're well, saying. Well, yeah, that's, that's the point. If, if we had better players, so if we mm. had a, a United City team or Chelsea team and we had those, was in the top four, had all that many amount of passes, mm. I think the quality of the game would be a lot better to watch. Yeah, Because it would be more exciting, it would be more... I, think, I reckon the passes would make it into the, in the opposition half a lot more. Yeah, but right I now, do think the onus is also on these players to put it away. Lacazette's had a, quite a few good chances in yeah. the last few games. Um, Abameng, not so much a feel for him. He's a bit more isolated, but Saka's definitely had a few really good ones. Uh, William popping into slightly more dangerous areas. Like I think these players have got to be doing better as well. Yeah. Um, but just to end on a word on Southampton, because I know obviously with the way Arsenal play, it's very easy to focus on what we're doing and where yeah. we're getting it wrong. Quote Southampton, they've, they've shot up the table. They're in the top four. They're doing really well. Yeah. I like Hassan Hutu. I like the football they're playing. Theo Walcott looks reinvented, which is mad. Um, and they are a dangerous side. Who They press you and they suffocate you. And they make things difficult. Agreed. Robbie made a great point. They like to play a high line a lot of the time. And when they played Spurs early in the season, second game, they were absolutely outclassing Spurs mm. at her whole first 45. They lost the game 5-2 because, because Kane picked mm. up the ball and found Son. Yeah. If we can exploit that high line, maybe there's something in there for maybe. us. Maybe. Well, listen, that's it from us too. Thank you for watching the preview of tomorrow's game against Southampton. Take care. Would you like to earn yourself some extra money this Christmas? Maybe you want to buy a gift for your friend, for your family. Maybe you want to donate some money to charity. Well, why don't you check out Profit Accumulator? With the help of Profit Accumulator, you can learn an easy way to earn some extra money by using a thing called match betting. Match betting is a safe and risk-free way to make money from free bets and promotional offers given out by bookmakers. And when done correctly, you can't lose. So to find out more and to sign up, check the link in the description and get involved right now with Profit Accumulator.